Well, did you know the average time a hiring manager spends looking over your resume is just 30 seconds? How confident are you that your resume will stand out? I recently had the chance to sit down with Aaron Cambier, a certified resident, professional resume writer, to find out some tips on how to catch an employer's eye. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having Aaron, me. That, that's a stunning, uh, stunning stat when you think about it, that you've got 30 seconds to impress a potential hiring company. Uh, I mean, to me, it's just not fair. It, I, it, it doesn't seem fair, but it's reality. It's and the reality. St statistics say it's actually six to eight seconds that you have to immediately engage the reader and get them excited to want to learn more about your background. Okay, so let's start out the process. So let's go back to your background a little bit. So how did you get to where you're at today where you're helping people build resumes, uh, career development, all those sure. types of things? Well, I was a recruiter and an HR manager for about 10 years, so I was on the other side of the hiring desk, going through resumes, interviewing candidates, and I realized there was a greater need to be able to give people the insight of what happens behind the scenes when you go through the hiring process and what it takes to really stand out in that process. And so then you decided that, you know what, I can help people in a different way. You go out on your own. What, what, how did you push yourself off the edge to say, I can do this? Oh, great question. Well, actually, I just started helping people uh, on my own for no, no pay um, because that's what you do. You, you know, help people we with help resumes people, right. and their career. And I loved it and realized there was a, a whole industry that did this. So I started part-time and still was working full-time and then eventually made the jump and have been doing it since 2009. And okay. I love it. So let's start. Let's talk about the, so what, what do people need to do today to, to get that jump that that uh, that wow that when somebody looks at that resume for those 30 seconds how do they start today the biggest thing is to scratch the idea of a resume as an autobiography most of us have the idea of I'll take my job description I'll put in a few dates and my job title and call it good and really that doesn't work currently what you need to do is talk about what you have done with those responsibilities so what impact have you had what the, what accomplishments have you delivered during that time um, I often use the phrase, you don't want to tell the reader, you know, this is what I was supposed to do when I went to work. You want to say, this is what I did do. This is the impact I had on the customer, the client, the team, the department, et cetera. So, your brand, so, so here's, here's some ideas on uh, some of the things that you work with your clients on. So um, what, if, you're, if you're new to the marketplace looking for your first job out of college or maybe it's your second job and you don't have a lot of experience, how can you build up that resume? The most important thing is to focus on what you do have. So you have something, even if it's been in volunteer experience or in your work experience that's relevant to what you want to do next, you want to draw out that skill set, uh, those skills that you've built that are transferable. Um, recent graduates hopefully will be getting some internships, um, maybe have some volunteer experience. All of those things that are relevant in that targeted career should be talked about in the resume. And do you pull back from college experiences? So, I mean, not maybe coursework, but maybe it was uh, uh, extracurricular things that you did on campus. Can you use those types of experiences? Absolutely, yes, es especially if it's relevant to your targeted career. But it shows that leadership ability or the the someone who's staying involved and dedicated throughout their college career. That's important. So let's go now to the other end of the, spe of the spectrum, and you've got the silver, gray-haired, older people like myself that, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> that this, if, they, if they're looking for a career move and a change and whatnot, and you've got a lengthy list of experiences. Uh, how do you coach that group of people? The most important thing for them also is to really target what you've done to your audience. So we're going to look at everything that you've done and pull out those transferable skills and not just the skills but the accomplishments piece because likely if you've had a successful career we have a lot to talk about. Um, most people however tend to undersell themselves. Most people think I was just doing my job, it wasn't anything special but I encourage you to think about you know things like what, what kind of feedback have you been given in your performance reviews? What processes did you help to improve? Um, how have you been recognized verbally or in writing? Those are the things you're going to want to include in your resume, not just what you're responsible for. And so the, the next step is the, the look itself, I mean, because there's so many different ways. And if you go on to, if you use Microsoft Office or Publisher or anything like that, you can find so many templates out there today to pull from. What do you suggest from a look perspective? Great question. Well, I suggest avoiding templates, if at all possible, because 99% of the candidates are using templates. So if you want to be 
uh, consistent with everyone else, use a template. But in this process, you want to stand out. You want to draw the reader's attention. So things like bullets, um, bold. There are certain hot spots if you do research that the, the, the reader's eyes go to on the resume. So making sure you have the right keywords and the right spots on the resume will help you stand out also. And how many pages should a resume be? Great question. So there is really, I tell people there's no resume page rule. In general, one to two pages is ideal, but ultimately it's more about the content. If you have great content and the reader's engaged and excited, wow, look at this amazing career. I can see how they can help me solve my problems. They'll read a longer resume, but really two pages probably would be the longest typically. And my last question, how far should someone go back if they've got a long career? How many jobs should you, should you go back before you say, I don't need to talk about that one 25 years ago? The guideline is approximately 10 to 15 years, depending upon where your breaks in employment fall. Every person is unique. Uh, someone that might be returning to something that they did 20 years ago and they haven't had that experience recently, we would go back 20 years. Yeah. But in general, 10 to 15 years. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks, Aaron, for being here today. Thanks A lot for of good me.